In this tutorial, we're going to look at a service called H5P, h5p.org. And what this does is it enables you and empowers you to be able to create your own interactive content in your browser and then to embed that content into an LMS, a learning management system. Now, it could also be embedded into a blog or a website or various other things, but most people that use H5P are building content to be used in their courses in an LMS like Canvas or Blackboard or one of the other many any LMSs that are out there. So you can see a couple of examples here. An interactive video. Here is an example of a matching game or a matching activity. These are just a couple of examples of the kinds of content that you can create and embed into your own online course or website. And to see other examples, notice that you can go up here to the top and click on Examples and Downloads. And when you do, it takes you to a page that talks about some of the options you have for using it in WordPress, Moodle, Drupal, etc. But notice that they have some more examples for us to consider. Here in Featured, it talks about presentations, interactive videos, memory games. But underneath that, there's a list of all of the different types of activities that you can create using H5P. And there really are quite a lot of them. So up here at the top, you can also click to say, I only want to see games that I can create. And there's a few that are there, multimedia, questions, and social media. Okay, so I've already signed into my account. You can see that here. But if you want to set up an account, you would just go here, sign up for a new account. It's pretty quick and pretty easy. Once you have your account, let's look at what you would do to create your own interactive content. So I'm going to go up here to the top, and I would like to just click on my account. When it takes me to my account, I get a list of recent content that I have made, and as you can see, I, I really haven't made any. And let's remedy that. What I need to do is click here where it says create new content, and it loads up the content creation interface. And I'm just going to go ahead and title this, and I'll call it Spanish Adjectives. Next, it says select content type. And this is where you get to pick what kind of activity that you're about to make. And I would like to make one that asks my students to identify certain words. So I'm going to go down here where it says mark the words. I'll click and it gives me the opportunity to see a demo. It gives some instructions about it. But I'm just going to click use because I know I want to use this particular activity. Next, there's a task description for the students. And I'm just going to click on it and put in a description. Click on all of the Spanish adjectives in this paragraph. So that's the description of the task that they need to do. Underneath that, I need to put in a text field. And within that text field, I need to follow these instructions. And it says marked words are added with an asterisk. So a correct answer should have an asterisk on both sides. So I'm going to put in a paragraph in Spanish. And then after that, I'll mark the correct answers with asterisks. So give me a few minutes to type in my Spanish paragraph. And then I'll resume the video. Okay, great. So I've typed in my paragraph here. And now I need to go in and put in some asterisks around the correct answers. And so I just need to do that. So pequeño is an adjective in Spanish. So I've marked that as a correct answer. Gigantes is another. So this is all you need to do to identify the correct answers, the answers that you expect the students to be able to identify and to click on when you're done creating this activity. And so I'm just about done. Hopefully I have done this correctly. I think I have. So next, I can put in some feedback for my students. If they get a score of 0 to 100, what feedback will they see? Well, how about you're done? If they've completed the assignment, if they got a 0, OK, they're done. Now, of course, I could also add another range, and I could put in some other feedback for the students. There's some other options I have below. I could use these behavioral settings or not. So I can enable retries. I can show score points, things like that. And there are some text overrides. So a bunch of good options that I have here. I'm going to go with mostly the defaults. And I'll just go down to the bottom and click Save. And it's creating this activity for me. Now that it's done saving and creating the activity, here it is in preview format. And you can see that the students are supposed to click on the right words, the adjectives in this case. But it does allow them to also click on the incorrect answers. When they're ready, they click check. And it lets them know how they did. 
Okay, so this is a nice little activity, but how do I get this into my LMS? Notice that there's a button down here that says embed. So I just click on embed. It gives me an iframe embed code and some size options. There's also some advanced options that you can see underneath. So I think I'll just leave all of the defaults in place. I'll click on the iframe embed code and I'm going to copy it with Command C or Control C on the keyboard. And then in my Canvas course, in this case, I'm going to click Edit on a page, but I could have also put this into an assignment or a discussion. But here in Canvas, just as one example, I could paste the code in, but it's not really going to understand that code unless I click on HTML Editor. So I click on HTML Editor, then I can paste in the code, click Save, and now look what appears on the page. My activity that I created appears on the page, and the students can play it or interact with it here in Canvas without leaving Canvas. So that's an example of what H5P can do for you. Now there are similar methods of embedding H5P activities into Blackboard or Moodle. So if you use those other LMSs, play around with it, see what you can do, try it out. Jumping back into H5P, I want you to know that that's just one of many different types of activities that you can create. And I hope that you'll explore and see what else you can make here in H5P. But perhaps the best thing that you can do with it is this. Let's say there's a tool that you use on a regular basis and you use it with your students and you would like for them to be able to access it from within their LMS. An example is Factile. I have another video tutorial on Factile. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. But what it is, is a website that helps you to create Jeopardy games for your students. And I know there's lots of different ways to create Jeopardy games, but this is a modern website that makes a really nice looking Jeopardy game, and it's pretty easy to do. But the downside is, there doesn't seem to be a way to embed Factile into an LMS or anything else. So here is an example of a Factile game, American History Review. I'm gonna click Play Now, and the activity begins. But I'm just gonna go up to the top of the screen and I'm gonna highlight the URL for this Factile activity. I'm gonna copy it and then back in H5P. And I'll put the title in as something like Factile History Game. I'll go down and this time when I select Content Type, instead of choosing Mark the Words or one of the other options, I'm gonna choose this option here, Iframe Embedder. Now if you don't see that, you may need to confirm your account. Sometimes you have to go into your email and confirm your account in order to see this. But anyway, that's it. If you don't see it toward the top, you might want to search for it. Just do a search for iframe embedder, click use. And now it lets me put in some options like the width and the height of this activity. And it has some defaults, so if you just leave it blank, it should just default to that. And then I can go in and put in the source of this content. And remember, it's this Factile History Game that doesn't seem to have an embed code. I don't see any option to embed, but I just copied the URL, and now I'm gonna paste it in to H5P, to the iframe embedder, resize supported, sure, that sounds fine, and then I'll click Save, and it's using all the defaults for those that I left blank. And here is my Factile History Game. But now, notice at the bottom, it is embeddable. So I can click on Embed, and I can go up and copy this iframe embed code. I can go into Canvas or Blackboard or Moodle, wherever you want to put this. And then I just need to paste in the code into an HTML editor or similar interpreter that can interpret HTML code. Now when I click on that, Notice that it becomes kind of hard to know where exactly to paste the code. So one trick that is helpful, you might want to click where you want the embedded object to appear and then just put in a bunch of letters, let's say a whole bunch of H's, and then you click on HTML editor, look for those H's, highlight them, and then paste. It looks like there was one H left over, and then click save, and it should put that embedded object right in the correct place for you. So there it is. And I can play this Factile game right from within my Canvas course, and my students can enjoy that, and they can play it as well. So to summarize, I value H5P for a couple of different reasons. The main one is it enables me to create and share interactive content, like memory games, like concentration type games, but also the paragraph example that I showed you, interactive videos, all sorts of different things that you can create on H5P and embed into your LMS or onto your website. 
But the other reason I really like it is what I just showed you, a way to take something that does not have an embed code and yet to generate an iframe embed code using H5P so that you can then put the content into your own course. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button below. And I hope you'll consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And you can look forward to another video from me at least every Monday.